Leroy Jenkins is one of the country's foremost faith healers, claiming he has the power to cure everything from the common cold to cancer. So why is he so upset with our Matt Mahar? Well, watch this Inside Edition investigation where we put the faith healer to the test. You Satanist son of a gun. <laughs> hey, get out of here. Why is this man so upset with me? His name is Reverend Leroy Jenkins. Tonight, lift your hands with me. For decades, the televangelist has brought his crusades to millions of people around the world. Today is going to be his day. But he doesn't look like your typical man of the cloth. He dresses and sounds like a lounge singer and even tells off-color jokes. But this self-ordained minister says he's been blessed with the power to instantly diagnose and cure life-threatening diseases. He says by just looking at someone, he knows all about them. And you use a computer? All day, every day. Huh? Every day. How did I know? I don't know. God told me. His life is so colorful, it was the subject of a Hollywood movie. Bless you in Jesus' name. Featuring Faye Dunaway and Robert Wagner. Amen. Amen. But Jenkins has had more than his share of personal problems. In 1979, he served five years in jail for conspiracy to commit arson and assault. He was later pardoned. In 1994, he was arrested for grand theft, but the charges were dropped when he agreed to pay restitution. And seven years ago, he married one of his followers, a 77-year-old widow who just happened to be a $20 million lottery winner. Jenkins took her to Las Vegas for the ceremony, but a judge later granted an annulment at the request of her legal guardian. Despite his past problems, his faithful followers have stuck by him. I know that he's a man of God, and that God uses him tremendously. I think he's a man of God, a true man of God. Jenkins says his gifts are real, and he doesn't use tricks like other faith healers. They wouldn't even know how to heal a toothache. <laughs> so when Jenkins invited us to test his abilities at a recent two-night crusade in New York City, we took him up on the offer. To prove he wasn't getting any advance information about the people he tries to heal, Jenkins asked us to meet him at his hotel. People don't have to look at you for three hours. You might as well look good. And then he asked that we drive with him to the crusade. When I was five years old, I knew there was something different in my life. Hundreds of people had gathered at this Brooklyn College auditorium, many hoping for a miracle. After simply twisting this woman's neck, she says her pain is gone. Oh, Jesus! Oh! And this young mother brought her daughter, hoping Jenkins could cure her crooked feet. Is her feet totally straight? Her feet are straight! They're straight. They're straight! And it's a good thing this woman came. Jenkins says he healed a growth in her abdomen that she didn't even know she had. I touch you in the name of Jesus for thy glory. Amen. We spoke to her a short time later. He healed me, like you said, something that I couldn't see within me. The crowd is so impressed that when Jenkins asks for donations, some give as much as a thousand dollars. Jenkins was so confident of his abilities, he challenged us to test him. So the next night, we brought along volunteers. These two people suffer from diabetes, and these two are confined to wheelchairs. When the healings began that night, Jenkins amazed the crowd when he claimed to heal this baby born with a severe spinal cord defect. I declare a miracle in the name of Jesus. <laughs> then, as I was sitting in the audience, Reverend Jenkins came to me. This is okay if I talk to you, sir? Have you had a physical lately? Yes. But then he got upset when I declined to answer his questions. I, I didn't come here to discuss my medical uh, needs. Yo, yeah, well, I done hit the nail on the head. Now you don't want to discuss it. Then go to the <laughs> But at no point during the event did he try to heal any of the people that we had brought along. After almost everyone had left, we persuaded the Reverend to see if he could diagnose and heal just one of our volunteers, Dan Dyroff, who suffers from type 1 diabetes. And you have never talked to me, sir? Never have. And I know nothing about you? Correct. So what did Jenkins think might be wrong with him? God told me that you had something wrong in the prostrate and that he was going to do a miracle if you will release your faith. 
That was news to Dan, because he says he never had prostate problems and was tested before and after meeting Jenkins. I spoke to him a week later. Your prostate seems okay? Yeah, no problem. He missed the boat on you entirely. Although Jenkins had agreed to sit down for an interview, it appeared that he was still upset that I wouldn't let him heal me. He erupted in anger when I tried to question him. We're not doing anything. No, I don't want nothing to do. You get out of here, and you're a devil from hell is what you are. You're an evil shit, okay? Now put that on the nationwide. That's what you are. I wanted to ask the Reverend if he was giving false hope to the critically ill. Is it fair that you go around? Is it fair that you come over here to make a living off of me? That you can't do any better than come over here to write a story, you atheist Now get out of here. And with that, he turned his back on me and was off to his next crusade. He's taking people's trust in, in their religion and twisting it to make money. This couple used to work for Jenkins Ministry. They asked us not to use their names in this report. They say they read and responded to many of those prayer requests. But they say as soon as the money was collected, those letters were quickly destroyed. Everything that they sent in, pictures of their family or their father that's dying, it gets shredded. Somebody sends in the picture of a parent or a child who's dying? And it gets shredded? Shredded. And has anybody prayed over it before it gets shredded? No. The people who send Jenkins money get a letter back thanking them. In it, he promises to pray for them. But these former employees say that's all a lie. The letters they're getting back say, say, I prayed for you last night. All baloney. All baloney. Jenkins admits shredding the letters, but he says it's to ensure the privacy of his followers. He says he does pray over some of the letters, but anyone They've got any brains at all knows that preachers don't read all those letters. Reverend Jenkins says he has the power to heal and perform miracles. Amen. A movie was actually made about his life. Bless you in Jesus' name. Starring Robert Wagner and Faye Dunaway. One scene not in the movie is his marriage to his second wife, Eloise Thomas. Jenkins married the 76-year-old woman less than two weeks after the death of her husband of 51 years. She was whisked off to Las Vegas, and she became Mrs. Eloise Jenkins, the preacher's wife. I did love her. She was a wonderful person. Anybody that knew her loved her. And he says his love had nothing to do with the fact that Eloise had won $8.9 million in the Ohio State Lottery in 1992. I try to save her from being robbed by her family. Jenkins moved Eloise into his home near Columbus. And a short time later, money started moving out of her savings accounts. $67,000 was withdrawn in two months, and 10000 of that went directly to Jenkins' ministry. Before her husband was dead, you were already taking money out of their accounts, or, or no. inducing her to do it? No, that is not true. Well, where is your not proof? True. She'd never had a credit card before in her life. All of a sudden, she has one, and you're charging clothes all over town on it. That is a lie. In your mind, was there any doubt that he was after her money. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. Attorney Ben Espy, a former state senator from Ohio, was appointed by the courts to be Eloise's guardian. He says she was suffering from dementia when she married Jenkins. My only goal was to make sure that she was safe and her assets were safe. The marriage was annulled after just seven months. The grounds? It had never been consummated. They determined that she didn't know how old she was. She didn't remember when she married you. She didn't know when she was going to Las Vegas that she was going I don't to know get who married. Informed you, but they're nothing but a bunch of liars. They're all okay. liars. Ever, oh. every one of them. So, Amen. Jenkins Ministry is flourishing, taking in nearly twenty million dollars in the last four years.